Mic check. Okay. Hello there. So what this video is about, it is only about one thing and that is how to turn on your LG TV automatically via Hyperlens screensaver, right? So let me not waste any of your time. Uh, let's get into it, right? Okay. So what you want to do is go to the uh, your config and hyperland uh, folder and there you will most likely have a couple of files because you have already uh, configured hyperland at this point, right? So what you have here is the general hyperland configuration uh, and the hyperlock configuration and the hyper idle configuration. So all of these start from within the hyperland uh, configuration. So hyperland configuration is calling uh, hyper idle and hyper idle is calling hyper lock. So lock is the lock screen like a screen screensaver and hyper idle is like a demon which sits in the background and waits for you to not move your mouse or touch your keyboard, right? So let's go ahead and edit uh, the hyper idle, hyper, hyper idle configuration file. And what you will see here is let me just decrease a little bit of this uh, font size so you can see it better. So what you have here is the um, general configuration uh, for Hyper Idle, which you can simply download from the GitHub of Hyperland. It's pretty uh, streamlined and straightforward, not too much going on here. Uh, after sleep, uh, you will wake up your, um, you know, computer, right? And you want to add a command which uh, is waking up your TV. So what is wake on LAN, LAN right? Let's go ahead and pacman uh, minus ss wake on LAN, right? So this is a package that uh, basically sends a network packet to any network device which is capable of waking up via the uh, magic wake up packet, right? So you only need to install this um, package on uh, any of operating systems, right? Uh, it is the same name both on, um, you know, uh, Arch Linux and on Debian, Ubuntu, Mint, you know, whatever. Just install this one and give it a try. Uh, give it a try. We um, uh, so let me just go ahead and copy paste this, right? So give it a try by doing this uh, simply in your command line at this point. After you install Wake Online uh, software, uh, just turn off your LG TV and try exactly this command. So what this command is, uh, the queue is um, doing a quiet output, so no output, just send the wake up packet without the, any any uh, of the output command, right? Uh, the I is the instruction to, to target the desired um, network device, right? So what you will most probably prefer to do is put your TV on a static IP address, which you can do in two ways. One of the ways is go to your TV settings and simply manually input the IP address. Uh, in my opinion, this method is undesirable because you will want to know what is the range of your DHCP server. So in a better scenario, you will go to your DHCP server and simply make your um, uh, MAC address of your of your TV to get always the same IP address via the DHCP um, assignment, right? So that's kind of a preferred way, in my opinion, because you don't really want to uh, tinker too much with your television settings. What you want to tinker with your television settings is that you need to set it uh, into the lowest uh, possible um, standby. I don't know how it's called exactly because I have set it up a long time ago, but you can check it out on the internet for your model of the TV because it's not the same for every uh, model of the television, right? Uh, even within the LG um, brand, right? It's not always the same option in the menu. Uh, and you, if you're using some other TV, then as well, you're going to need to check your manuals. So what you need to do is uh, make sure that your TV doesn't go into too deep sleep, uh, because if you do that, it will um, come off 
of your network, right? So it will not be able to receive networking packets. Uh, so that's something that you will probably want to tune if this command is not working. Uh, however, uh, once you know which is the MAC address of your uh, of your TV, right? Uh, you don't really need to know uh, which is your IP address of the TV, even if it's constantly changing, right? So what you can do is you can simply use the broadcast IP address uh, by typing uh, 255 uh, in all four octets. Uh, and what this will do is it will basically broadcast the wake online packet to every network device in your local network and it will tell I want to wake up only this device whichever IP it has at the moment, right? So you can also use this method and it will most likely work just fine because most routers uh, are set up by default to to tackle the uh, broadcast IP addresses, right? So this is not uh, this is not a problem. You can do it like this even if you don't know the IP address of your TV, but you need to know the MAC address of your TV. Uh, how you will find out the MAC address of your TV, that's up to you. You can go to your router and see what are the currently assigned IP addresses and simply recognize which one is your TV and just write down the MAC address. Uh, there is another method that you can look um, behind your TV, often they have the MAC address uh, stated on the on the sticker. Uh, so there, there, that may be a legit method, right? So let's go back to the hyper idle and see what we have here, right? So after sleeping, basically we are doing some waking up. This, this is a default um, proposal from the GitHub of the Hyperland for the configuration of Hyperlock. And just after this command successfully finishes, you will add this other command that will wake up your um, your TV, right? And also you will go to the uh, other listener where you have like timeout. I don't know how much is this, like five minutes or something. Uh, this is what I have set my uh, hyperlock slash screensaver, right? So it basically um, it, it basically turns off uh, the uh, output towards my monitor and my TV because I have two of them. So what happens here, uh, when, when this happens, my monitor immediately recognizes that there is no more signal. Uh, it shows up like an um, orange light and it goes to sleep. And my TV also detects that, that there is no signal, uh, but TV being a TV, it just displays a message that there is no signal and that I should check my equipment, right? Uh, and after a couple of minutes, it, it actually uh, turns off. So it, it is fine for me. This is a this is a good scenario for me. I have no 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 not not too many problems with this approach, right? Because it only stays with a message that there is no signal for a couple of minutes and then it turns off. I would prefer it if it would turn off uh, sooner, like in a matter of half a minute and not five, I think it's five, uh, but it is good enough that it will uh, turn off eventually and not that far far away from after the screensaver locks the screen, right? And on the resume, this is when you move your mouse or keyboard, uh, then you will send the packet once again. And also you have uh, the timeout 10. This is the version uh, where you wake up your computer, but don't type any password. So this is like uh, either you have changed your mind about logging into your computer or someone accidentally um, kicked your mouse or keyboard uh, and the screens have woken up, uh, but you don't really, uh, you're not really present and you don't really want to log in. So after 10 seconds, it will go back to sleep and that, that's fine, right? So this is uh, another place where you will want to uh, put this command as well. And this is pretty much it, right? Uh, so th that's about it, right? Uh, if you want to wake up your uh, TV when your computer boots up, uh, this is before you have logged in and before uh, Hyperlock has even been loaded. Uh, this is where you could um, tackle this scenario with systemd or some other init script. Uh, that you will make if you are interested in the um, instructions on how to do this with systemd so that your TV turns on automatically after you turn on your computer. 
uh, then you can check out uh, one of my older videos which I'm going to link uh, just about here right now and also it will be linked uh, far below this video in the description right so you can check out that one as well so we have the full complete um, environment where you will want to turn on your TV in uh, in in both of these scenarios right so you don't really have to turn it on never and you can let it uh, turn itself off whenever it detects that there is no signal um, so le let me just show you what this looks like with hyperland right now Okay, so this concludes our video for today and if this is all that you have uh, came here for, right? so you can stop watching this video at this moment, right? Uh, give it a like, subscribe and all this uh, cool stuff. Uh, but just what I wanted to tell you uh, around the, the Hyperland configuration, right? So I have switched to Hyperland a couple of days ago. I have actually used it on a laptop for many months and I'm somewhat used to it, but laptop and PC configuration is not exactly the same because uh, in my scenario, I only use laptop as a laptop and I never connect it to anything external except when I am uh, making content with it and uh, showing you guys live on stream how some things work. And that's when I mirror my full HD display uh, with the um, capture card, which is also full HD. So I just make it a mirror screen, right? Uh, but both of them behave the same. Uh, and the I don't really need waking up the displays, right? Uh, in, in this scenario, what I need with my... Uh, with my laptop scenario is different uh, than my PC scenario regarding screen locking, right? They don't behave exactly the same. So now that I have started transitioning on my desktop to Hyperland, I'm going to play around more with Hyperland configurations and I'm going to give you some more hints about how to configure Hyperland. And if you have been um, maybe motivated to hack your hyper idle configuration with this maybe you want to do something else when your computer is idle it doesn't have to be waking up the screen locker it doesn't have to be uh turning on your screen you can um, i mean hyperland um why did why i didn't didn't do this before when i used kde plasma because kde plasma doesn't give me the power to do stuff like this okay uh, it simply cannot uh, wake up my uh, monitor when the um, screensaver, you know, when you move the mouse. There, there is no such place in the Plasma configuration where you can put custom commands to do that at this point in time, right? So in Hyperland and probably probably in all other uh, or most of them, you know, window managers where you have, uh, you know, manual configuration of things wh when something happens, right? This is where you have a lot of more control and this is where um, imagination comes up, right? So the imagination is what uh, makes computers fun, uh, really, really fun. And uh, I'm kind of looking forward to doing some more uh, Hyperland content, right? Uh, so you, what you can see right here is uh, like a default Hyperland configuration. I mean default uh, way, uh, way bar configuration, but in a couple of days this is going to get slightly customized because I do it like a step-by-step -step thing, you know. Uh, yesterday I have had a lot of trouble with um, making VLC work uh, and you, if you're interested how I made VLC work on Wayland properly, uh, you can check out my... Um, uh yesterday's uh, stream uh, which is a little bit long but somewhere in the middle we have tackled a lot lot of um, uh, VLC issues on uh, Wayland uh, on Arch Linux right uh, because by default it doesn't quite want to go to Wayland mode um, and then in, in X Wayland mode the fonts look ugly because I use the uh, fractional scaling on my uh, screens and not only that I use fractional scaling but I use different fractional scaling uh, on the right mo uh, monitor and on the left TV uh, so that's even more complex for a uh, non Wayland uh, friendly application right so uh, I'm gonna link that one as well here and probably somewhere deep below uh, this video uh, also if you're watching this on Odyssey or Peertube I'm sorry uh, but I don't have the live stream uploaded there, so um, you, you will 
want to somehow see my video on YouTube, uh, if you don't want to watch uh, YouTube directly, uh, feel free to, to use YouTube download um, shell application or, or whichever your favorite uh, software for accessing YouTube without, you know, uh, Google knowing about it, right? So it is up to you how you will uh, watch this video because it's a little bit complex for me to stream on multiple uh, platforms, but if I do add more uh, platforms, uh, I imagine that I may stream uh, like on YouTube and Peertube at the same time. Uh, maybe I will add Twitch uh, to it. I still have to research more on how to multi-stream properly, right? Without paying my money to some other uh, services, which um, which I don't really need, right? I can do all, the, all of this uh, re-stream locally. There, there are ways to do that. I just need to figure it out how to do it the most convenient way for me, right? So whether it will be YouTube, Twitch, uh, Peertube, Rumble, I, I don't think that Odyssey even has uh, a streaming option. So it is what it is, right? Uh, and I, I will make sure that you are um, promptly, you know, um, informed when I'm I will going to start uh, multi-streaming right for now it's just YouTube simply because of my practical reasons uh, but soon enough you can expect some some uh, expansions of that right so let me know in the comments have you been trying to to use uh, like Okay, so what just happened is uh, that um, I haven't been moving my mouse and my keyboard for quite some time uh, because I have been talking for uh, like a five minutes, right? And my screen server kicked in, so <laughs> it is what it is, right? Uh, let me know in the comments if you are um, like motivated uh, by everything that you have seen in this video. Uh, I know it's not much, uh, but what I believe that you may get from a video as simple as this one is maybe some of the imagination will wake up in some of you guys and girls uh, that you will want to want to configure your own system right so uh, like get a more control out of your own system and not rely on some um, desktop environment that just works which also speaks volumes to where Linux is today like with uh, GNOME and uh, KDE Plasma we are at point where everything uh, works so much just like that just out of the box that people kind of are starting to forget that uh, Linux used to be a lot more manual and a lot a lot of configuration files and uh, uh, even before a lot of kernel compilations because otherwise you couldn't get drivers and etc, right? So we are now at the point where things work so well out of the box that we are now seeking uh, this uh, thrill of uh, having the manual control over our systems and uh, I'm not saying that everyone is like that, of course uh, everyone is welcome into the Linux and free software world uh, whichever um, uh, um, you know, um, attitude they have, right? Whether you expect everything to just work or whether you want to have 100% manual control over everything that happens on your system. Both of these uh, ends are perfectly fine and perfectly fit into what Linux presents today. And I guess I'm gonna see you in the next video. And before that, uh, please check out my Patreon and maybe subscribe. I would very much love to do a lot more content for you guys and uh, you know uh, if you help me in one way i help you in another another way so uh, thank you for these guys which are going to appear on the screen any second now uh, for already um, being uh, uh, sponsors of the channel and uh, see you uh, in a couple of hours uh, on the uh, sunday linux learning session goodbye